With this second painting in the American series, I thought I would go for the full-blown snow scene, not sort of the, the scene that there's a little bit of snow lying around or it's up on the mountains. I've got a great grouping of buildings and I think this is gonna make a marvelous subject. So let's see how I go. Okay, thought with this one, I would go for the full-blown snow scene. I'm not sure why, but well, one of the reasons could be is snow and beach scenes really aren't that technically different. The shadows may be a little different, as in snow is a little more reflective, so there's going to be a little bit more of the sky reflecting down into uh, the shadows. But as a general rule, I think snow and beach scenes, especially some of the I know the Australian beach scenes that have a very white bleach sand, uh, they can almost sometimes you can think, am I painting snow or, or sand? So with this one, there's a really nice shadow in that mid distance. Uh, and the danger is if I come in too hard, too dark, it will want to force itself forward. So that's why I've got to get plenty of the ultramarine blue in, which I think I'm getting a good amount and there's that little step back to the little hillside in the distance. This was just a charming little grouping of uh, buildings. So, and I think a lot of paintings, it's more about the shapes. It's more about uh, the, the whole narrative of the scene uh, more than, or how much detail or, or look at the pretty colors. I'm always thinking, shape, composition, design in my initial stage of thinking. Um, once I've got that, when I start painting, it's light to dark, warm to cold, or cool to warm in this one. And then uh, the, how are my shapes going? And then uh, how are the edges? Because it's the edges that are really the, the true art, I think, or the true um, subtlety in brushwork as to how uh, strong or weak and where we're placing them. So now I'm coming with a little bit of darker value in this background. Do have to be careful that I don't go too dark. So, But the one beauty with oil paint is uh, that it will dry half to sometimes almost a value lighter. So that's always a bit of a saving grace uh, for my darkest darks, that's why I love to really push them almost to a 9.9 .9 because they're the ones that I want to, uh, especially with interiors, uh, something that is closer to us. The further, further a dark goes away, it will have more blue and it will recede and we will be wanting it to uh, sit back nicely. But you can see the uh, rooftop on this main building, how it's just grabbing my attention. And I find if if uh, if that's working, well, then I know I've really got the basis to a good painting. Uh, I do find um, skies, it's great to think of it as, especially this type of sky, as a thin veil of silk that's just sitting and it's our ultimate backdrop. So we don't want too much thick paint or, or I don't really like to get too much thick paint. Every now and then I may do it just to break the mold a little, but as a general rule, uh, silk for the sky, cotton for the mid distance, and then thick sort of almost uh, that uh, shag type carpet. So to really build that texture up, even though with this being uh, snow in the foreground, it's a fairly smooth, contoured surface. Uh, actually, that's where it probably does resemble uh, snow. Uh, snow does resemble um, sand, is that it can become quite hard packed from wind and, and uh, temperature. Okay, good time now to sort of get a little bit more work done on these buildings. Always careful not to sort of uh, bring the small brushes in too soon, too much. But I do love these uh, Rosemary & Co brushes. They're the Eclipse brushes, comers. Uh, and I think I use a three quarter inch and a half inch 
Uh, they do give me quite a bit of uh, range, variety. I can use them on foliage, uh, especially as they start to wear out. They're really great with foliage because they'll give me a little bit more of a random brushwork or brush mark. But I do love to use the hog hair brush as well, uh, which is the red handled brush that you may see at times. I will sometimes use the chunking hog hair from Rosemary and Co as well, but um, sometimes if I run out, I can buy a, the Art Spectrum brush, which is a good locally made brush. Unfortunately, um, they're not available without a lot of trouble overseas. Now that little area of snow in behind the buildings is quite important because it's a nice little bit of relief from all of the, the uh, information uh, of the buildings. Uh, and it's been in shadow as well. So it's not only going to be a smaller shape than the foreground, but it'll be a little darker. Um, so it's gonna sit back quite nicely there. Now I've also got to make sure I bring enough warmth and light onto the uh, foliage as well. And that'll uh, help contribute to the whole effect. Because really the uh, buildings, trees, that's almost my mid distance. It's kind of tying into the, the mid distance and the, my distance would be the, the background hills. Not so much the dark blue one, but more the, the, very, the very back. But um, that's where, because that mid distance is so uh, information heavy, it doesn't hurt to have a peaceful areas like the sky and the foreground. Well, that was a fun scene to get completed. There was that great grouping of buildings. It's got lovely light, but it's nothing like sort of having that chance to fine tune things as well. It's really where I think I'm starting to get my best work from. It's only so much I can get down uh, and so much nuanced in the one day. So I think that's probably the big takeaway. Be prepared to revisit things just to see if you can get it that extra five or 10% better. Thanks for watching, all the best. Bye for now.